Today we're doing the front disc brake swap on the Nova, so stick around. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and we are doing the fronts of the Nova today. I've already done the driver's side but I thought I'd get that out of the way so I could walk through the steps and maybe give you guys a tips and tricks in doing this process. We're going from the drum spindle over to a Willwood uh, dyno light setup on the front. So we've got dyno lights coming for the rears also but that'll be in a different video because sneaking suspicion we're probably going to have to pull the axles to get the drums off. In fact, I know we are just from taking a glance at it right now. The front's not too bad. In fact, I've spent probably more time just going ahead and getting the new big block springs installed during this process. Should give us a nice cowboy rake until we get the motor swapped over, but I wanted to do that while all this stuff was in and out of the way. Uh, so, first things first, whenever you get this package, set it out. Get all the parts out. Verify everything is there that you need. Be aware that some of the bolt kits that come with this will actually have the wrong part number in the manual, but if you dig down into uh, what the description of the part is, you can figure it out. But you wanna make sure that you have everything ready to go before you tackle this, because if you're missing one of these uh, bolt kits, you're not gonna be able to get anywhere. Uh, common tools are gonna to be needed. You're gonna need a torque wrench that can go up to about 80 uh, foot pounds. Maybe actually there's one or two bolts on here uh, that need to do uh, 110 or 120 foot pounds. So if you've got something that can go up to 150, you should be good. The, the lowest side of it, I think, is probably 25 to 30. So even my 150 range can handle 25 all right. Uh, other than that, step by step, read the instructions. This is a safety product. We're talking about disc brakes here. We don't want to mess anything up on here because this isn't like something if it doesn't work, the car doesn't run. If it doesn't work, the car doesn't stop people get hurt, people will die. So take your time, follow the instructions. And this isn't for the people, you know, if, you're, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, I would say don't do it, have a professional do it. So let's get all that out of the way and talk about the first things that we gotta do. Well, first I went through and I bled the system out. So I've got one of the vacuum, uh, you know, things you hook up to the air hose to pull, to uh, bleed your brake lines. I use that to pull all of the fluids out of the brake lines, just so I don't have brake fluid dripping as we unhook uh, hoses and connections and things like that. That was the first step. The second step was removing the drums. And we'll go over and look at the front. There's basically three bolts that hold this on, a lot of springs, things like that, that you got to get moved out of the way. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, whenever you pull your wheel off, you're just going to have your drum housing on here. This thing will literally slide off. It might take some wiggling to get it out of the way. But that's how you access your drum shoes, things like that. On top of it, we're gonna pop our dust cap off because we will be removing that uh, spindle nut here in a bit. <clears throat> Honestly, the way that this set is set up, it's probably easier to go ahead and pull that spindle nut out and get our uh, uh, rotor here out of the way so we can get the brakes because the brakes aren't gonna come off. At least the backing plate will not come off until that is out of the way. Uh, big big thing on stuff like this, make sure and use new cotter pins and uh, because you don't want these things to break. Now it's not going to take much to get this spindle nut off and you're going to be saving it because we're basically using the existing spindle. So we're going to be using the same spindle nut whenever we get the new uh, wheel flange on here. So make sure and set that aside so it's easy to find whenever the time comes. I'll tell you what, let me see if I can get a little more light in here because it's really dark over here on this side of the car. Okay, once you've got the spindle nut off, this thing will pop right off. And this uh, bearing retaining washer that's on here, it's grooved to fit in a groove on your actual spindle. It comes with a replacement because the spindles are a little bit narrower, are the, uh, the uh, rotor faces. The wheel mounts that we're going to are a little bit narrower. So... That part we don't have to save. Basically the only thing that we're going to be reusing is the spindle nut. One of the bolts, actually this one, and we'll have to put some washers on it. Now the next step that we've got to do is we've got to get these springs out of the way because there's this is actually a bolt up here where these springs are mounted to that's part of the three that mounts this thing up. And generally I just try and pry these things loose somehow. We'll get in here and See if we can just work them off. Okay, 
there's one and I'm sure they make appropriate tools for this but we're not worried about saving these so we're not coming back in with them okay, there's the other one last but not least this one usually comes off pretty easily okay so I like to take any parts that I pull off of this just throw them in the old drum and then we can just kind of spread these open like so to get to this one right there now we gotta go ahead and and you'll have to back these up. They're three quarters, at least on this one. Back these out. And this one's a little bit bigger. I'll have to bring my, well, I, got, I guess I got my sockets over here. Oh, you can't get a socket on this one. You gotta use a wrench because it's too close to the uh, actuator. Okay, so the top one's a 15 16 And it has locking tabs on there, but honestly, you don't need to worry about them. You can literally just twist this thing through the locking tabs. And we'll get a little bit loose and we'll leave it for last and we'll focus on getting these two out. Okay, before we drop our last one out to remove this assembly, we're going to go ahead and unhook our brake line up here. And there's a retainer clip. We've got new brake lines to come uh, down from the steel line, the solid line. We got new uh, braided ones that go with the wheel woods. And so we're just gonna break this nut loose right there and then just drop this whole thing out as an assembly. Okay, now with our three bolts out, we should be able to pull the assembly clean off and it's out of the way. That's a, kind of the hardest part about this. Now, we'll go ahead and move our steering arm out of the way. Be aware if your steering arm's to the rear instead of to the front, the brackets for these are designed to match your calipers back here. Sometimes they'll fit. In this case, it will fit. There's clearance perfectly fine as you move through the steering arm's uh, motion. If it doesn't, you can actually swap the front uh, left and right brackets around and move the calipers to the front and uh, to get clearance there. So your revolt, your results may vary. Do it as you need to do it. And then while we're in here, I need to go ahead and replace this spring. Okay, now that we got the spindle side ready to go, we can go ahead and start uh, putting all this stuff together. As I said, double check. There's two hole patterns on these things. Just drop them into your wheel. Whenever you're done, you tighten these down to 77 foot-pounds. So you're going to need a vise to hold this stuff to really get it torqued down. You're going to want to make sure that you got some 271, aka red thread locker, and uh, some uh, bearing grease for disc brakes because it's a high temp grease that's mandatory for this stuff. And so we're going to go ahead and move on to assembling our rotor. And it's kind of got a multi-piece approach to it here where we need to assemble this backing plate to the rotor and then we'll assemble our hub to the backing plate get all that stuff uh, situated and locked down because then what we want to do is go over put our bracket on uh, our spindle just push this up on there and make sure that everything is sitting the appropriate distance there's a specific distance that we want to see in there but more so on this we want to make sure it's even because what we'll end up doing whenever we put the caliper on the bracket then we'll shim the caliper to make sure that the rotor's running straight in the caliper. Okay, this is going to sit down on top of that so you'll see that there's kind of an edge that pops out that's going to come down through the back and then we this is recessed in there that way we can use these cap screws to get down in there cleanly and double check which one so we'll be using these there's six of those I'll go ahead and get Loctite on all these and get them started we'll run them down snug and then we're going to torque these down in a crisscross pattern and let me find the specs on here for 25 foot pounds on these this is the silver part is the rotor adapter now be aware that there's some Torx and some big Allen fittings on here. In fact, the big Allen looks to be a 3 8 Allen key that you're going to need for the backing plate. And the Torx, I believe, are T40s or T45s. And you're going to want the socket style 
so you can easily torque this stuff down because if you're using trying to use a uh, oh you know an Allen wrench or something like that this thing we're hitting like 110 foot pounds on you're not going to be able to hit that with an Allen wrench so uh, get the ones with sockets on there it's, it's always good to have a set of those sitting around whenever you start doing aftermarket stuff because you'll see a lot more of these uh, style Torx bits and such and let's go ahead and get our wrench set up as I said we're going for 25 foot pounds on this and remember whenever you're not using your wrench to zero it out or take it to this lowest setting for storage and let's take this over to the vise and get it started okay as I said we're going to want to do this in a star pattern so work your way from corner to corner Okay, now let's get the hub done. Okay, let's go ahead. Before we assemble the hub to the rotor hat, uh, we wanna go ahead and get our wheel bearings packed. I'm gonna go ahead and pack both of them so I don't have to use multiple sets of gloves. Find me a nice piece of plastic to put them on here after I get them packed. And you got your big one, which is your inner bearing, and we're gonna have to install that one, and then it has a seal that goes on the back side of it. Seal's kind of a pain, and they're very flimsy, so be aware. You want to make sure and use a very nice flat surface for installing that seal or else uh, you can get these things bent up pretty bad. Ask me how I know. You know, it's one of those things where it's, you're not going to get too much grease on your hand whenever you're packing these things in. So just go to town on them. Make sure that you're getting them packed in there good. And I like to go around about twice. Get a good amount in there. This is the one thing that you don't want to skimp on. Now that we've got that done, let me pull one of these off. Which one's cleaner? Okay, pull this one off. I'm gonna flip this over and you'll see in the race in there, we're just gonna drop this right down into the race. Sit nice and even. And now that's in there, I go ahead and pull this off and we can take our seal and go hammer it in. Okay. I've got this in there. It's just lightly clamped in there. I'm, I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little of this excess grease in here. Just wipe it around the outside edge of this seal. Help kind of get it in there. And if you have a seal kit, I can't find mine. Use it since I don't have one. I do have a seal driver for an LS. I believe this is the front seal. Get it on there square. Let's see if we can't get this thing started. Just trying to walk. Okay, now we're started. And we want to mash this thing down flush. Perfect. Okay, now that we've got that done, we're gonna take this, this side is what's gonna sit down onto here. And then we've got these five, and these are the uh, T45 bolts I was talking about. Go ahead and open them up. Throw some Loctite on these, and let's see what these are torqued down to. These are gonna be down to 45 foot-pounds. Okay, so that portion's done. We've got this assembly ready to go. Now we're going to move over to the bracket on the car and get that shimmed up and ready. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to see the orientation of this because of this giant bevel on this is going to go in with this baby right there. That goes straight in. No shimming on that one required. And then what we're essentially doing is shimming the bottom side. So take our shims off here. Run it through our bottom side bracket, put our shims on, and then feed that through right there. Now, we've also got to remember to tie in our steering arm. That is part of all this. And what I'm going to go ahead and do while I'm tying this, here, uh, this steering arm in is, is I'm going to run some washers, thick washers on this to 
bridge this out and give me room to secure this side of it. Two thicker washers like this should be enough to take up all of our slack, so we're making sure to get into the threads on this one. And we'll go ahead and feed it through also. Okay, the critical part here is, as I said, we want to make sure that our clearances are good. Go ahead and slide this back until the bearing's in there. There we go. And the idea behind it is, is that this needs to be even top and bottom. Doesn't, you know, there's no specific, there is some measurements that they say to check on it, stuff like that. That's not the critical part. The critical part is going to be that uh, it's even top and bottom because whenever we mount the caliper on, those things have to be uh, shimmed evenly so they engage the, the pads at the same time evenly. So everything has to be square. And we're looking really good there. I'm very happy. Uh, so we can go ahead and pull this out of the way. And then what we'll do now is come back in, back this hardware out, throw the Loctite on it, and then uh, torque it down to spec. Okay, on this big one, we're gonna be all the way up to 120. Whew. It's always fun to try and torque something down to 120 foot-pounds. And a fender well. And then we're going to be on 65 foot-pounds on that one. A lot more reasonable. Okay. With that said and done, we're ready to go ahead and install our hub. So let's go ahead and get this thing on here. And then we'll grab our bearing and our retaining washer and we'll set these things in. Go ahead, slide this one in, center everything up. And there's specific uh, steps that is required whenever it comes to uh, putting new wheel bearings in or just adjusting wheel bearings in general. So follow your recommendations, but what we're going to do on this situation is we're going to run this thing down finger tight. And when I say finger tight, we're going to get it pretty decent finger tight in this case. Okay, now we're going to spin it. This is just going to clear any burrs and stuff off of there. Now we want to seat the bearings. So we'll throw our socket on there, tighten it down, about a turn, bearings are seated good. Now what we'll do is we'll back them off, okay, should be backed off finger tight. Now we want to run this thing down to a key slot, so right now, and it's going to be finger tight, we're never going to be more than finger tight on this uh, spindle nut. I can't get to the key slot on that one, so I'm actually going to have to back it off to right there. If I were to get it to the next key, keyway on there, it would be too tight. That's not what we want. In fact, it's too tight for me to even finger tighten it. So we may have seated the bearings too hard. That's the last thing that you want to do. So that one right there is going to be where it's at. And that's going to be good to go. So we'll throw a new cotter in there and we'll throw a dust cap off and we're done with the rotor side of it. Next is to mount the caliper. It can be a little fun fishing this stuff in there. So let's go ahead and get one ready. I like to do the bottom first. Throw our washer on there. Get our two shims ready. And the easiest way I found is to go ahead and feed this thing through the bracket and throw the shims on here. And then you can work that onto the back of the bracket kind of get everything lined up and started. And we can do the same for the second one, or the top one in this case. Uh 
Uh oh. Come back to me, Shim. Okay, we'll rotate this forward into our bracket. And let's go ahead and snug these down. Okay, I'm not sure how well that you guys are going to be able to see this, but basically what we're just going to do is look down through the caliper on both sides of the rotor, see what our alignment looks like. And I think from the looks of it, this one's a lot closer than the driver's side was. But I still think that we probably need to just run one shim. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen these up and pull one shim out, check it again. Well, looking at it now, I like it better with two shims in there. But now I know I've double checked. I can go ahead and come in here, add my shims back in, and go ahead and throw the Loctite on and uh, torque it down to spec now. Now comes the easy part, stowing the pads. You gotta love this. Uh-oh, that's a problem. So one shim, this pad went in tight. I don't like that. Should just drop in. Okay. Well, looks like I'm gonna pull that shim back out and just run one, because the back's floating. Doggone it. Better safe than sorry though. Okay, let's try these pads again, see if they just drop into place now. Okay, right, that's much better. Slid right into place. Go ahead and install our retaining pin through the back side. And where's my needle nose at? Well, there's not enough space over here for all my tools. There they are. And get this little bend out. And we're good to go. Okay. So now, perfect. All we got to do now is hook up the brake line. There's a small, oh, I don't know, I'd say 1 8 MPT port on the back. I got the brake hose fitting, the flex one. I'll go grab the parts right now. We'll uh, throw them together. Okay, got our hose, our fittings here, and I threw a little dope on this thing. So I'm going to come back in here, thread this in. I'm looking for a downward angle whenever I'm done. So I'm going to be paying attention to where this thing snugs up so I can kind of have it pointed down towards the steering arm. Okay, that's good and snug. I'm not going to be able to get another rotation around, so I'll go ahead and put my hose on this side. Okay, so for our next fitting, we'll go ahead and thread on the other side of it here, get it started at least. And then we're going to bring it up through the factory location and get that fitting started too. I believe this one's a 3 8 Yep. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna put our retaining clip on here. And I find generally you'll have to come in here with something and kind of find a pry angle on this thing to get it up high enough. There we go. And make sure, you know, you, you run this thing, swing the, the wheel through its range of motion. As you can see, we've got plenty of slack in there. And you're going to get a little bit more whenever the suspension's loaded up because this is going to move up whenever the car's down on the wheel. So just double check. Make sure you're not getting into any of your steering geometry, things like that. Okay, that's our front disc brake conversion. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Take your time. But, man, the Willwood kits, everything goes together real nice. They've got everything just designed to a T. 
So we have the fronts done. Next we'll be doing the, the rears. We'll dive into that. We've got a couple extra parts that we're waiting on the rears because I got the ones without the internal parking brake that are using the uh, external, like the caliper style uh, parking brake instead. One of these cute little things right here that's still a mechanical parking brake, but it requires a different bracket and I have to get those brackets on the way. In fact, they are on the way. I just gotta wait for them to show up. That being said though, with the setup, we can still go ahead and install the brakes without the parking brakes right now, and then the brackets should be easy enough to get to to actually uh, add those in later on if we want to. So we'll take a look at all that. Uh, if you have any questions, hit up the comments down below. Hopefully this helps some of you guys out there that are considering doing this kind of conversion uh, or just want to see somebody walk through it. Uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed, do that. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.